We humans are an arrogant bunch. We think that all the best examples of architectural genius must be ours. But actually, some of the cleverest architectural feats are those achieved by the animal kingdom. These are the most amazing homes built by animal architects. Number 15. Sociable Weaver Bird Nest while they may be far from the biggest bird on the planet, sociable weavers actually build the largest nest of any. These nests are structural marvels that would make even the greatest architect say, wait, this was built by a bird? They can't even read Architectural Digest. Sociable weavers construct their nests on trees and other tall objects, and they are impressive. These nests are large enough to house over over a hundred pairs of birds, with many generations living inside at a time. The nests are made up of separate chambers, each of which is home to a pair of birds. The reason for the impressively complex construction is to protect the birds from the intense heat outside. While temperatures could reach up to 91 Fahrenheit outside, or 33 Celsius, the temperature inside of the nest may only be around 45 to 46 Fahrenheit. That's 7 to 8 Celsius. The sociable weavers have clearly mastered the art of building houses. These huge, impressive colonies may be active for generations. Some lasting well over a hundred years. I guess that kind of longevity is what happens when you commit to building with green and renewable resources, right? Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Beaver Dams. I think we all know and appreciate the incredible effort that the beavers put into their work. These are some of the most prolific workers in the animal kingdom. Next, two professional voiceover artists, and their work truly stands for itself. Literally, actually, because, well, it's a structure, isn't it? Beaver dams are usually, though not always, made of mud and branches, but there's a much bigger reason for their construction instruction than just looking nice or showing off. Beaver dams are built to protect against potential predators who may be looking to feast on the smaller beaver community. But what's most fascinating about the beaver dams is that they have a significant impact on the surrounding environment. These dams actually become part of the ecosystem, making the beaver one of the most important animals in our natural world. Bet you didn't expect uh, that one, eh? I mean, voiceover artists are also some of the most important in the world, but another time maybe. The beaver's work is not done once the dam is completed. Actually, there's a lot of maintenance work that must be done, usually in the fall. So when you really stop to think about it, it's probably true that beavers do more work than humans. How does that make you feel? I know. Number 13. Woodpecker. You know him. You love them. Woody is a pain in the butt, but the woodpecker is generally, uh, well, it's still a pain in the butt, but it's also a pretty impressive and fascinating animal. Ask the woodpecker how they build their homes, and they'll probably stare blankly at you since they can't speak English. But once you take a look, you'll be impressed. Woodpeckers create a home for their young by excavating what is known as a roost hole, which is not as gross as it sounds at the beginning of of the breeding season, between late April and mid-May, the woodpecker will begin excavating a large round hole in tree trunks. Once the babies finally arrive, the eggs will be laid inside the trunk and raised safely. As long as the woodpecker and her babies are inside the nest, no hungry raccoon can even consider getting close enough for a snack. While I couldn't possibly comment on its cartoon equivalent, the woodpecker is one of the more unique home builders. Think about it. Outside of hobbies, cartoon owls, and breakfast elves. <laughs> Who would ever think to make their home inside a tree? I can't think of a single human I know who's lived inside a tree. I rest my case. Number 12. Australian Weaver Ants 
There's absolutely no question that ants are among the greatest architectural minds the world has ever seen. And yeah, I recognize that's a truly bizarre sentence. That said, Australian weaver ants are truly something else. These ants are known to be some of the most cooperative nest builders in the world. It's pretty fascinating. In 1768, English naturalist Joseph Banks encountered the Australian weaver ants for the first time and quickly wrote about them in his journal. His writings detail tell the incredible teamwork of thousands upon thousands of them, each manipulating leaves and gluing them together to form an impressive nest. Centuries later, insect experts are no less fascinated by the impressively strong teamwork demonstrated by these tiny little construction geniuses. It seems there's no end to what you can accomplish if you have an entire army at your disposal. What a relatable thought that is. When the nests eventually grow weak or start to die, the weaver ants leap into action to build new ones. No matter what the situation or circumstances may be, there's absolutely no question that the weaver ant will never take the day off. There is always an opportunity to build or rebuild, and that's an impressive work ethic for unpaid employees. Number 11. Compass Termites Sure, they're not the cutest animal in the world, and yes, they're destructive and horrible, but you just... Would you please hear me out? Termites make great homes for themselves, and no, I don't mean your home, although I'm sure your home is lovely, I uh, I don't know what you want me to say, man. The compass termite builds its home in a most unique and well-considered way. The mounds built by this specimen can be up to 13 feet tall, 8 feet wide, and 3 feet deep. And they're always oriented to receive the warmth of the morning sun without suffering the extreme heat of midday. <laughs> That's pretty smart, right? When the land floods in summer, the termites don't have to worry too much, having stored enough food supplies to keep them surviving through these troubled times. Basically, the compass termites build some of the world's most well-thought-out bunkers. You have to admire that kind of forward thinking, at least. Whether you hate the sight of termites or you think they're fascinating, you can't deny that their hardy work here is pretty impressive. Who among us could build a 13-foot tall mount to live in? Actually, I'm sure some people could just choose not to. Pretty sure I just destroyed my own point, but what a cool home. Number 10. Long-Tailed Tit if you've ever been called a long-tailed tit in a particularly heated argument, you're gonna love this one. Turns out, it's a compliment. Not only are they super cute and fluffy and gentle, but they're also architectural geniuses. So, kind of the ultimate compliment when you really stop to think about it. Both the male and female tits work together to construct a new home in up to three weeks, and it's far from an easy construction. The nest is shaped much like a bottle, with a roof and entrance near the top. To make the inside warm and cost for the eggs and chicks, the birds create a lining using as many as 1,500 stray feathers. You have to admire the incentive to recycle natural resources, I suppose. Eventually, the female tit will incubate a clutch of between 8 to 12 eggs. Two weeks later and those eggs will hatch, bringing the tiny tits into their new home. The long-tailed tits are clearly pretty artistic creatures. This is not your everyday bird's nest, and I'm sure we can all agree Agree that it's a pretty great home for any baby tit. Thanks to other supportive long-tailed tits, the survival rate of the babies is pretty good. So that's a pretty good result for everybody, right? Number 9. The Red Oven Bird some of you are already assuming that the oven bird is a slang for a chicken. You would be wrong. Actually, the oven bird is much, much smaller than a chicken or a duck and gets its name due to its resemblance to a Dutch oven. It makes sense, right? The oven bird's nest is one of the most interesting and well-protected homes in the world. In just two weeks, these tiny birds take around 2,000 pellets of mud, weighing approximately 10 pounds in total, and turn it into an impressive dome that will then become their home. The process as a whole is awe-inspiring and not unlike how a human archaeologist would construct a similar structure. Although, you know, humans have hands and tools that tend to make the whole thing a lot easier, so maybe it's not all that similar, but I don't know. 
let's not pick technicalities with the Ovenbird. The unusual appearance of the Ovenbird's nest is specifically designed to prevent predators from even attempting to attack. If the nest's shape isn't enough to turn them away, the concrete-like mud certainly will do. Pretty genius if you ask me. Nice job, little Ovenbird. Nice job. Could I make a house for mud? No? I absolutely would try. Number 8. Eastern Tent Caterpillars the tent caterpillar has that name for a reason, and no, it's not because it loves camping. The eastern tent caterpillar makes its home in the crotch of its host tree. Actually, that sounds worse, doesn't it? You know what, uh, let's go in depth and explore what home looks like to this unique insect. The tent of the eastern tent caterpillar is among the largest built by any tent caterpillar in the world. And boy, do they know their stuff. The caterpillars build their home facing southeast to take advantage of the morning sun. A pretty smart move if you ask me. The tent consists of layers of silk separated by gaps to allow the caterpillars to rest. Because of these openings, the caterpillars are free to enter and leave whenever they wish, and the tents are multifunctional, offering protection as well as a space to bask and develop. A unique species deserves a unique home, and the eastern tent caterpillar certainly knows how to build one of those. And sure, while it may be found in the crotch of a tree, it's not weird. This is a totally normal thing. Nothing weird about it whatsoever. Nope. Sounds totally normal to me. Number 7. Cliff Swallows Where do cliff swallows live? Take a wild guess. If you said cliffs, you just won the big cash prize. Only we don't have any prizes and there's no cash, so I'll send you happy thoughts instead. The cliff swallows have a very interesting way of building their homes in some of the most dangerous parts of the world. Are you ready for this? Cliff swallows live in mud nests, situated on cliff faces and other vertical surfaces. These nests are usually part of some larger colony, often home to hundreds if not thousands of other birds. Working together, a pair of swallows will gather pellets of wet mud and lay them down one by one one until it almost reaches the above overhang. By the time the nest is finished and ready to be made a home, it will contain well over a thousand mud pellets. And you thought building a Lego Death Star was hard. To avoid attracting the unwanted attention of potentially dangerous predators, the birds will often build their nests in corners away from view. And quite often, the nest opening will be so small that no owl, snake, or mammal could get close. Seems like they have everything worked out. I wonder if they have a big cash prize I can borrow. Number 6. Paper Wasps Nobody wants to find a wasp's nest. That's a true nightmare just waiting to happen. But the paper wasp is not your ordinary wasp. These Vespid wasps live in some of the most unique nests in the insect world. And no, they're not paper machete experts. Not yet, anyway. Paper wasps have an incredibly creative and artistic way of creating their homes. Gathering fibers from dead wood and plant stems, the wasps mix these resources with saliva and use them to construct their nests. Soon the distinctive nests are completed and appear as if they're made of a gray or brown papery material. These nests tend to be made in sheltered areas and can be found everywhere, from tree branches to an old clothesline. Some individual species may vary the design of the architecture, but the basic structure remains the same. I guess nobody wants to stray from a classic, right? Some paper wasps build their homes with, uh, you guessed it, paper, while others prefer to use mud. It really depends on the individual species of wasp, but overall I think it's pretty obvious that these wasps are creative and resourceful, and I guess in the long run, you have to appreciate and respect that, because... They're wasps, and they will hurt you. Number 5. The Caddisfly 
You may not know a lot about the caddisfly, but you probably should. While they're pretty inconspicuous, these insects are incredibly important in their ecosystem. And they're on our list for a reason. They have some truly fascinating homes. And like a teenager who changes the posters on her wall by the month, it seems that it all depends very much on however they feel. Generally speaking, the materials used to build the caddisfly's case depends entirely on the surrounding environment. And whatever may be available. For instance, seasonal materials may become unexpectedly available, such as terrestrial plants or snail shells, making the case become something very different than planned. Or if the larvae are living in running water, they may need something heavier to prevent them from being swept up in the current. It really depends on the circumstances and needs of each individual caddisfly. So to sum it up, the caddisfly may be a new insect to you, but it's undeniably one of the more creative and adaptable creatures in the animal kingdom. Their homes can be made of just about anything, living or dead, making these homes some of the more unconventional places to live. MTV Cribs would be very different if they were profiling the caddisfly, that's for sure. Number 4. The Vogelkop Bowerbird in the human world, someone carrying flowers toward their home would likely be seen as a romantic act, or in some relationships, a desperate attempt to earn forgiveness. But in the world of the Vogel Cop Bowerbird, there's a much more reasonable and logical explanation. They're building their home. Actually, home may be kind of misleading. This is not a bowerbird nest, but an aesthetic display designed to attract a mate. So I guess it is a romantic act. You see, male bowerbirds feel the need to construct and maintain a bower, an artistic structure built for the sole purpose of impressing the female. The female bowerbirds will visit all the neighborhood bowers to compare the designs before basing their mating decision on which looks the best. So for the males, creativity and architectural skills are very important if they are to have any kind of life. So when you see a bowerbird approaching with some flowers, it's not a desperate attempt to apologize for some kind of questionable decision, they're actually just doing their very best to attract a mate, which later they may find themselves approaching with flowers in a desperate attempt to apologize for... <laughs> you know where it's going. I don't think I have to say it. Number 3. Montezuma Oropendola if the Montezuma or a Pendola were a human, it would be one of those very annoying humans that can't decide which house they want to live in. They are incredibly picky birds, but when they do find a home, they do an incredible job making it their own. Once they find the right tree, tall and separate from other trees, the Oropendolas will begin weaving their elaborate nests on the most slender tips of branches. From the tall isolated tree to the tiny slender branch tips, all of those specific details are deliberate. Because their Central American environment is rife with hungry monkeys, the Oropendola have to ensure they have a decent chance at survival by making their home in a tall tree with limited swing potential, and their nests on branches so delicate that any raiders will likely fall. The Oropendolas give themselves a solid advantage. In around 10 days, the Oropendolas can fully complete their nest and can get on with the difficult task of conceiving, birthing, and raising their children. The Oropendolas live in colonies, with a single colony having well over a hundred nests, hanging from the individual branches. Is it a good idea or is it tempting fate? You tell me, but I have to admire the ingenuity of it. Number 2. Army ants. Unlike humans, ants need absolutely no encouragement to join the army. Actually, they're pretty much born into it, and the way they're able to work together to build pretty much anything they could ever want is, well, nothing short of inspirational. Or it would be if humans respected ants. Ants are infamously known to be colony creatures. Just about everything that they do, everything that they even think about doing, comes back to the colony. 
that means there's no dominant leader when it comes to constructing these incredible homes. Actually, the whole thing is just dictated by the group as a whole. Therefore, if anything goes horribly wrong, nobody can blame Phil. Well, they can, but everybody would have to agree. And, you know, that's a very risky strategy when you're all living and working in the same place. Good luck with it. The army ants are known to demonstrate swarm intelligence, a kind of coordinated group behavior that really does show results. Whether or not you personally like the outcome, or even the insects, it's pretty much irrelevant. You can't deny that they are interesting, fascinating insects. Actually, we should probably take notes from these ants, because honestly, I watched a lot of footage of these guys, and they have, like, no traffic jams. Number 1. The Baya Weaver in India, the Baya Weaver has a reputation all of its own. This incredible bird is known to create some of the most stunning and breathtaking nests you've ever seen. If you've never heard of the bird, you're in for a treat. The Baya Weaver is known pretty much exclusively for its elaborately crafted nests, which can usually be found hanging from tree branches. These nests are weaved mainly by the male, but naturally they require the female's approval at just about every single turn. After all, if they're going to live in it, you can bet they're going to have a say in it. But while the male may be in charge of actually building the nest, decorating the inside is very much the female's territory. Female bears have been known to add blobs of mud, clay, and even cow dung to the walls. Because, you know, that's what you want to see when you eat dinner. These incredible creations are truly a sight to behold, and so they should be given the amount of work that goes into them. And when the nests are eventually abandoned, they're often adopted by other animals, such as mice or other birds. Because, you know, if it sits on the market for too long, the value goes down. Which of these houses do you think is the most impressive? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.